When troubleshooting the Therion Arctic 12-volt RV refrigerator, it's essential to understand how its key components work together. Three critical parts in the system are the power board that manages the thermostat inputs and monitors the refrigerator's operation, the compressor control board, which acts as a communication bridge between the power board and the compressor, and then the compressor itself the heart of the cooling system, responsible for circulating refrigerant. If you're dealing with compressor start failures, error codes, or operational issues, testing the compressor control board is a critical step in diagnosing the problem accurately and determining if and what replacement is needed. Step one, verify input voltage. Before testing, ensure the refrigerator is connected to a reliable power supply. Remove the rear access panel to locate the compressor control board and use a multimeter to test voltage at both the terminal assembly and the positive and negative terminals on the control board. The operational voltage range for this unit is 10.5 to 15 volts, but ideally for testing, we should see around 12.8 volts. Next. Power cycle the system. Disconnect the power supply for three minutes, then reconnect it. Monitor voltage for the next five minutes. If you notice a dramatic voltage fluctuation and the compressor doesn't start, inspect the circuit branch and power supply for general electrical issues like damaged wires or corroded connections. Once steady voltage is confirmed, we can move on to testing the control board's output voltage. Step two, test output voltage from the control board. Once input voltage is confirmed, we can test the control board's output voltage to determine if it's functioning properly. Verify voltage at the input terminals, the positive and negative on the board. We are looking for about 12.8 volts. Next, check voltage output at terminals D, C, and T. Terminal C and T, when using the negative terminal as a reference, should match input voltage, around 12.8 volts. Terminal D should read approximately 5 volts. If voltage at C, T, or D is abnormal, this indicates internal damage or a short in the control board requiring replacement. If voltages are normal, move on to the next test. Step three, bypass the thermostat input. This test will help us determine if the issue lies in the control board or power board. Disconnect the spade connectors at terminal C and T, and then connect a jumper wire between these terminals. At this point, the fridge's display may flash a E5 error code. This is expected. Observe the compressor. If the compressor turns on, the issue is with the power board or thermostat input signal. So we would move on to troubleshooting the power board. If the compressor does not start, the issue is with the compressor's control board or the compressor itself. Step four, inspect the control board and wiring. If the compressor did not start with the jumper wire in place, it's time to inspect the control board and wiring. Disconnect power and remove the control board. Check all wiring connections for loose or pinched wires, burn marks, corrosion, or any visible signs of damage. If damage is found, replace the control board and test the system again. If no visible damage is present, we'll proceed to testing the internal compressor components. Step five, test the internal compressor components. To determine if the compressor itself is the problem, disconnect power completely. Disconnect the three pin connector from the compressor. Remove the compressor control board. Use a multimeter to test resistance and continuity across the three compressor pins. The start terminal, marked S, run terminal, R, and common terminal, C. The expected resistance values are the lowest resistance between the start and run, a higher resistance between the common and start, and the highest resistance between the common and run. Infinite or zero resistance means there's an internal compressor fault and the refrigerator must be replaced. If there's normal continuity detected, reassemble and test operation. Occasionally, disconnecting and reconnecting components resolves unseen connection issues. If the issue persists, 
replace the compressor control board. By following the step-by-step -step troubleshooting process, you can accurately diagnose whether the compressor control board, power board, or compressor itself is at fault. A methodical approach ensures that you are addressing the root cause, avoiding unnecessary part replacement.